Welcome to Lavender Recap. In today's video, we'll be going through an American drama movie entitled Fall Street Money Never Sleeps. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. After eight years in prison for insider trading and mail fraud, Gordon Gecko gets released on parole in 2001. He exits the prison in the hopes of finding a car waiting for him, but no one is there. He's on his own. Jacob Jake Moore is awakened in his apartment by his girlfriend Winnie seven years later during the great American financial collapse in June 2008. When Jake switches on the television, he sees Gecko being interviewed. In order to promote his new book, Is Greed Good?, Gecko has become an author and lecturer. Jake joins Keller Zabel Investments, a Wall Street firm. Zabel has lost faith in the sector and is perplexed as to how a loss can be considered a profit. Jake is given a $1.5 million bonus, which he is instructed to spend in order to keep the company afloat. The company's stock begins to plummet the next day. Jake tries to see Zabel walking his wife's dog in the park because he hasn't shown up for work. Jake inquires as to whether Keller Zabel will perish, but Zabel just responds that he's asking the incorrect question. Who's not going under is the correct question. At the Federal Reserve, Zabel talks with the U.S. Treasury Chairman. He tries to organize a rescue but is thwarted by Brenton James, a former business partner with whom Zabel had met paths eight years before while his company was on the verge of bankruptcy. James insults Zabel by offering to purchase Keller Zabel stock for $3 a share as opposed to $75 a week ago. As Winnie returns from her trip, Jake sees the news on television about Zabel's suicide. Before he proposes to her, she hugs him and comforts him. He proposes to her as she heartfully accepts his proposal. Jake visits Gecko after the lesson and announces his impending marriage to Winnie. They're riding the subway together and Gecko reveals that his daughter won't speak to him because her brother Rudy committed suicide a few years ago because of Gecko's incarceration and social shunning because of his father. Jake notices a photo of Winnie as a toddler in Gecko's possession and asks if he can have it. Jake will be traded for a more recent snapshot of Winnie, according to Gecko. Jake will find him later if Gecko provides him with his photo and his business card. Gecko and Jake have agreed to arrange a deal in which Jake will allow Gecko to speak with his estranged daughter in exchange for Gecko's assistance in gathering confidential information in order to undermine Brenton, Jake's mentor. As a result, Gecko displays his distinctive life philosophy in which every agreement he makes in exchange for something is only a trade. Jake does some investigation with the help of Gecko, who is incredibly resourceful, and discovers that Brenton James benefited from the Keller's able debacle. Jake promotes false reports about an African oil rig owned by Brenton's company being nationalized in order to grab his attention. Brenton demands a meeting with Jake after the company loses $120 million. At the meeting, he expresses his admiration for Jake and offers him a job, emphasizing that if Jake declines, he will have a difficult time finding work elsewhere. Jake accepts because he wants to kill Brent and avenge Zabel. Winnie and Jake travel to Long Island to see Jake's mother, a struggling real estate salesperson. She requests $200,000 in order to put her homes on the market. Jake delivers it to her, but Winnie informs Jake privately that she'll squander her opportunity once more. She requests that he return her prize ring since she doesn't feel comfortable wearing it. Jake pretends to phone Gecko and asks for his permission to spend dinner with him, so he and Winnie go. Gecko spots a significant businessman and introduces himself, only to be dismissed as nobody during their reintroductions. Winnie exits the dinner furious because Gecko hasn't altered his greedy habits. Jake chases her down and she warns him that if he returns, Gecko would wipe them off. Jake returns to Gecko's flat a few days later and delivers the Winnie photograph he promised. The Locust Fund, a private offshore hedge fund, was betting against Keller Zabel according to Gecko's analysis. Jake says that Brent and James promised him a job, and Gecko speculates that James' testimony was the reason for his eight-year sentence. Jake is perplexed as he imagined Bud Fox was the only one who imprisoned Gecko following Fox's insider training conviction in 1985-1986. to Bud Fox busted Gecko for insider training, but it wasn't nothing compared to some of Gecko's other crimes. He and Brenton had a falling out in 1988, and he assumes Brenton was the perpetrator, although he doesn't know for sure. Gecko requests a different trade, he wants to speak with his daughter face to face. Jake gets demoted at work, so Brenton's point lady may lead a pitch to Chinese executives. Jake's initiative impresses Brenton, and the firm has made more money as a result. The firm is in peril though, and Brenton doesn't want anyone to know. Slowly but steadily, the economy is deteriorating. Jake and Winnie are invited to a fundraiser hosted by Brenton. Gecko requests $10,000 from Jake so that he can attend and reconcile with Winnie once more. Gecko bumps into Bud Fox while wandering around the gathering. Following his father's retirement and death, 
Apparently, Fox served his sentence and went on to grow Blue Star Airline into one of the country's best airlines. Fox was a multimillionaire. After selling the company, he sends his best wishes to Gecko and advises him to keep out of mischief. Gecko departs for Winnie's location. Burton informs Jake that the Chinese will invest $150 million in the fusion research Jake has been advocating for. Gecko meets Winnie on the steps outside the building and they have an intense talk. He informs her that she is his only possession and that she will be his gal till he dies. Jake stands there watching as she hugs him. Jake informs the chief researcher that the funds are on their way. The American economy will implode in the next few months. During September to October 2008, the stock market lost billions. Jake has arrived at his flat and informs Winnie that the world as they know it has come to an end. Winnie says that's not acceptable because she's expecting a child. Jake is taken aback but overjoyed and he kisses her. Jake is enraged by Breton's attempt to sabotage fusion research because it's not profitable, despite the fact that it would benefit the entire globe. Unlike the oil industry, Breton would be unable to control the source once it was discovered. Breton is told to fuck himself by Jake who quits. Jake informs Gecko of what has occurred and Gecko reveals that a remedy exists. Winnie has a $100 million trust fund account in Switzerland, which Gecko established when she was born in the 1980s. When Rudy died, he informed Winnie that after he got out of jail, he would need that money to reassert himself. But Winnie reneged. She has always pondered donating it to charity but has never done so. Jake receives a call a few hours after arriving in New York, stating that the money has not come. He becomes agitated, but his mother intervenes before he can deal with Gecko. She requests $100,000 due to the housing market's collapse, but Jake only gives her $30,000 and informs her that he can't afford to squander any more money on her nonsense real estate ventures. He rushes to Gecko's flat and discovers that it's empty. He has left. Jake informs Winnie of what has occurred and that he's been speaking with Gecko for some time. She calls off their engagement and wants Jake to leave since she no longer trusts or feels comfortable in his presence. He departs sadly and follows Gecko to England where he's once again running a financial firm with the $100 million he stole from Winnie and Jake. Jake offers him one more deal. Winnie gets her $100 million back in exchange for a grandchild, and Gecko gets a grandson. Despite being inspired by Jake's ultrasound of his son, Gecko refuses to let up on his status as a leader. It's not about the money, he says. It's about the game. Giving the money away, according to Gecko, is a deal he cannot make. Jake departs. Jake begins piecing together everything from Keller Zabel's fall to the economic bailouts being granted for Breton's company over the next few weeks, using the earlier information gathered by Gecko and Brent. Winnie is in charge of the story and Breton James is revealed. The company's board of directors fires him, and Breton is obliged to testify in front of a congressional committee about his misdeeds, despite the fact that they already had Breton's cooperation in the Gecko probe. Breton's career has come to an end and has been abandoned by the Sharks. Breton's board of directors, led by Julius Sherhart, visits Gecko in order to begin doing business with him, owing to Gecko's newfound legitimacy as a result of his London firm's phenomenal success. He speaks in a language that his materialistic business clients understand and respect. By correctly forecasting the impending financial catastrophe, Gecko sold the market short and transformed the $100 million he stole from his daughter into a staggering $1 billion. He proudly displays his account assets. Gecko is once again a billionaire. Jake notices Winnie, who is heavily pregnant, walking to her apartment and offers to assist her to carry her belongings. Her son has been kicking her in the stomach and keeping her awake at night. Winnie thanks Jake for his assistance and feels his son's kicks, but the two do not reconcile. Gordon appears and informs them that he anonymously transferred the $100 million into the account of the fusion researchers. Now that Gecko has achieved his goal of becoming a millionaire by stealing money from his daughter, he has finally returned the modest sum. He tells them that they form a nice couple and that as their father and grandfather, he would like to be there for them. He says as he walks away, What are you talking about? You don't believe in comebacks? Jake gives Winnie a kiss. Before the delivery, Winnie and them reunite, and a year later, they host a party for their son's first birthday that involves Garden Gecko. What was your favorite scene from the movie? Comment below.